I'm Richard. I'm going to be talking for the next half an hour about data center infrastructure management software. I'll show you a little bit about what it looks like and try and get across some of the use cases and some of the benefits. But the key thing is it's about reducing, reducing complexity. So I'll briefly discuss the data center landscape, which is obviously continually changing. Um, there was a small show of hands in terms of who's using infrastructure management software at the moment, but in reality we all are. We all have spreadsheets, we all have asset management databases, we all have change control systems, and, and we, touch, we touch on all of those areas. So we, we're introducing the concept of second generation. So we're at the first generation at the moment. We do it the way we do it, manually or, or with a third party application. But what does, what does the future look like? And then we'll, we'll talk really about the use cases, which is probably the, the, the most um, interesting part of this presentation. So, very, very briefly, who, who are Sunbird? So, we've been um, 12 years in, the, in, the, in this market. Uh, we've seen um, a, lot of, a lot of growth and a lot, and a lot of change, particularly around how these applications are reviewed. So, like Amazon, it's, it's not just about buying a piece of software, it's what was the experience like? How well did it integrate with our, with our existing system? How, uh, are you happy? Are you, um, are, are you happy with your choice? Um, of, of, um, of application. But our mission and our, our, our vision for our organizations is about simplicity. We just simply want to produce elegant software that's easy to use and it works um, out, out of the box. So, you know, everyone sort of, you know, puts up their various analyst quotes and there's various different views on, on our market, but the reality is, is we're going through unprecedented change within, within the data center landscape. We're moving from, from um, uh, on-premise systems, off-premise systems, hybrid systems, cloud, public cloud, private cloud, part-time cloud. You know, but at the end of the day, we still have central teams. We still need to make central decisions. But we've got some tools here. We've got no tools here. What tools do we buy there? And the complexity of the information around uh, the data center is, 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 is very high. But at the end of the day, we need to make decisions on where should equipment go. And we need to know, will things fail? Can I safely use this capacity? Where is my spare capacity? And that's ultimately the problems that, that we're trying to solve. So we're seeing, obviously, change, but we're seeing hybrid becoming the norm. You know, we're seeing on-premise, we're seeing edge, but we're seeing cloud as being you know, instead of really the future, it's, it's, becoming, it's becoming normal now. Co-location uh, is normal. We're able to get some data from the co-location provider, maybe from their power infrastructure, but how do I get that information into my systems and maybe into my CMDB? And different vendors are using different tools, so interoperability is, of course, um, very, very important. But in terms of the future, very much as far as we're concerned, it's about these predictive analytics. I need to know, am I going to be okay? Where am I now? What is the impact of change? What is the impact of projects that may be coming through? And a project could be adding to my infrastructure, but it could also be planned decommissioning of my infrastructure. So it's about understanding, understanding this, this moving target. So then we move on to the tools. And a tool, you know, it really doesn't work without process. You know, at the end of the day, unless this, unless this tool is able to be uh, updated, we end up with a situation where we can be, we cannot trust the information that, that we're given. So in an ideal world, we want the database and the visualization to physically represent what is actually happening within my, within my data center. So we need process behind that. But then you already have process, so there needs to be a process discussion. Are we purchasing a tool that inherits existing processes? Are we changing our existing processes in order to match those delivered by the tool? Or in reality, is it something in the middle? Can this tool help me uh, become more efficient? And can um, we save time and, and, um, and potentially say it save money? So at the moment, we end up with, with typical, you know, if we survey a, a, a typical audience, we have silos of information. 
We, we have the network team with their own set of tools. We have infrastructure managers planning space and power and cooling with, with a separate set of tools. And it might be a, based on a certain vendor. But the reality is, unless we can bring this together, I can't make the really start looking at making the decisions um, that, that we need. Um, so should we consider sort of almost running our enterprise data centers like, uh, like a, a cloud provider? But at the end of the day, the cloud providers are able to give very quick um, provisioning and very quick and very accurate uh, reporting. And you know, you, arguably, it's impossible with the sort of um, you know sort of heterogeneous architectures that you're going to get within within enterprise. So the reality is, this is this is a um, uh, this is a journey, and we won't necessarily reach reach this as a destination. So essentially. Um, second generation DSIM, it's, we're looking to sort of enhance what you have at the moment. And we're looking to integrate what you have at the moment and bring in new functionality that takes in the new um, architectures that were either put, put in place or, 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 or are planning. So some of the use cases that we're looking to provide is, you know, let, let, let's start looking around some of, some of, some of these customers. You know, uptime is key. Efficiency can wait, but uptime um, is key. You know, we have power infrastructure within maybe high-density racks that's almost impossible to track manually. You know, in Europe, we have three-phase power at the rack as, as, as a norm now. 32-amp um, three-phase at the rack would deliver 12 circuit breakers. Do I have two PDUs in that rack, or do I have 12 16-amp PDUs in that rack? Because a breaker can trip and the, power, the PDU will, will still work. So I've got 12 PDUs in the rack. I've got equipment that's moving its load dependent on, on, on CPU or temperature or vendor. And trying to track that manually as to where I should put the next server and which phase and which breaker, it can almost, can almost be impossible. But unless we get it right, breakers can trip, we lose, um, we lose service. Uh, we, we have downtime. Stranded capacity is a big part of this. I know I have 100 units of power available. It's very easy to look at meters on the wall and see that I'm using 60. I know there's 40 spare, but where is it? Which room, which rack, which phase, which breaker? Um, and unless we can find it, we can't utilize that capacity that we've spent a lot of money buying and, 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 and provisioning. Okay. Planning out new facilities, that's a very big application for, for, for what we do. Designing the rack layouts, um, under, um, producing work orders, producing um, um, you know, documentation for engineers to, to install, so that we can ensure that the right device is connected to the right port and there are no mistakes. If we have uh, you know, PDUs and cabinets that have relays that can, um, that can switch a port on and off, we need to be absolutely sure that we're going to power off the right power, the right power supply connected to the right, um, the, the, the right server. So, so what, what, does, what, does the tool, uh, what does the tool look like? So we've got a, um, just a few GIFs here just showing the Sunbird tool. And, and this is sort of how, it, how it's used in, in, in the real world. So behind the scenes is a library. We, under, we have over 30,000 devices that you could of install in a data center, or that you have previously installed in a data center. We know um, how much um, it weighs, we know the physical dimensions, we know what it looks like, we know the ports for power, we know the ports for data. So 30,000 is great, but we can quickly tick off just the devices that we're using within, within my company. So I can choose a device, a DL360 G10, and there it is um, on the screen. We then decide, right, how many of these do I want to install? How many of these um, um, are in the project that we're, that we're looking at uh, planning? And so essentially, we will choose um, how many data ports um, we wish to connect and where to. Are they going directly to a piece of equipment, or are they going via the structured cabling? how many power supplies are installed. And then when it comes to power, we know what the budgeted value is. We can factor that to say 60%. But if we have intelligent infrastructure, we can say, well, 
of the DL360s in my estate, this is the average utilization in, 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 in my data centers at the moment. Or we can simply override that and put this is the budgeted power for this particular device. What it will then do is go out and search for the best location for this particular project. It will find racks with the, the um, sufficient environmental, um, so it's not too hot, um, space, um, power, VLANs, and any of the variables that we, that, that we can track. And we can then place that particular project in, now, in, in that cabinet. And what we can do is we can place it in a reserved or a planned state. And we can assign a project number to it. So one of the common complaints that data center managers have is that we're almost the last people to know about a project. Here are some boxes, can you install them next week? Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's fairly common when you have conversations. So it's now about, well, you need early visibility of hardware looking to land within a, um, a shared facility. This is the best location for it, and this is where we're going to reserve and plan the space. We can then go through change control, we can integrate with ITSM, and we can eventually put that into a production environment. And it's very easy to see what's installed, what's not installed, and then the impact of these projects maturing. I may run out of a resource, I need to alarm, I need to install more cooling, more power, or, or something, something will change. It's then also about understanding where assets are located. Now, there are lots of different ways of searching for an asset, but simply present a graphical view of the, of, of the room. Everything is to scale. The cabinets are to scale. The assets are to scale. We know physically where everything is installed. I can simply type in a wildcard, type in a name, type in a cord ID, type in anything that you've got installed, and it'll take me straight to that device. I can then apply other search criteria to it. So show me a, um, um, a server with the name of X, but show me the um, project number uh, associated to that. And then show me all those that are installed and then all those that are remained, uh, remaining to be installed. And simply graphically, it will show you exactly where, th where things are. But then in terms of the introduction, we're also talking about um, the complexity of all of this. So what this slide is basically showing at the moment is I've found a particular asset. I can see where in the, in the cabinet it's, it, it's located, but where is it fed from? So in this particular case, um, these are the data and power connections for this particular server. I've cut through all the noise. Um, we've long-lined everything. Obviously, you wouldn't physically install it like this, but it's very easy to just see the interdependencies. So, and everything in your data center is an asset. You know, a patch panel is an asset with 24 ports on it. We know where that port is fed from, we know where that port is going to, and we can then create that chain. So we know that this port is connected to this asset, to this structured cabling. So if there's any work to be done anywhere in that chain, you know what is going to be uh, impacted. And a common observation is, well, that's all very well, Richard, but I haven't got days to put all of this information into the system, and it would be lovely if we could have this, but I've also got a day job to do. So at the end of the day, typically what we're doing is there's a decision point. Do I trust my existing data sets? You've probably got a lot of this information at the moment. If we trust it, we migrate it in. If we don't trust it, we do some selective audits to get that information in. We plan the project. Maybe assets, maybe power is, is our primary consideration. Data can wait. We can do that uh, a little bit later. But essentially, it's worth doing because what we're going to help you do is reach safe decisions very, very quickly. A little bit more about the impact of change. So this is, this is quite, a, quite a busy slide, but essentially each column is a, is a cabinet and we're looking at what if for power budgets at the moment. So essentially, dark blue is what we're using now, light blue is spare capacity, and orange is the project that we're particularly looking at. And there are other colors for, for other projects. So, okay, it's, it keeps on moving, but this is where we are now, this is what our spare capacity is, and this is the impact of projects maturing. But these projects could be decommissioning, it could be removing equipment from. So looking now, looking at the future, is a very small 
uh, is, is a very important part, uh, part of what we're doing. And all of this is going to be given without any configuration at all. So a big part of Sunbird in terms of our, our design philosophy is that we, we offer user groups. So there are some customers in the room. Um, a, around a week ago, they were in a hotel in Heathrow in, in London. We had over 50 people in the room, existing customers. This is, this is our product now. This is the new release that's coming out. What do you think? And a good, robust discussion about what's missing, what they like, what they, what they don't like. But through that user interaction, we have produced these widgets. So there's around 80 of them. As soon as we're connected to assets, as soon as we're connected to intelligent infrastructure, you're going to get all this information without doing anything. Yes, we can then change, well, I want to look at a month instead of a day, and, and, and I want to look at this data set instead of, instead of that data set. But this should be easy to use. We should be able to get meaningful data out of it with, with um, minimum setup and minimum in, interaction. So the views, you know, it goes, it, it goes on. Um, number of requests, requests by type, by project, by, by asset. We can slice and dice this data in many, many different ways. We can also introduce color. So all we've done here is take use um, the intelligent PDUs, use environmental monitoring, taking sensor readings from all the various different locations and represented it in a color chart, but it's dynamic. So this could be, this is what it looks like now, but it could also play back, so this is the, um, this, is, this is what it's, um, the change, um, this is what change looks like over the last month, over the last year, and we can see the evolution of the environment um, within the, um, within the data center itself. Or it could be pressure, you know, air pressure represented um, with you using color. So it's very easy to see where, where, where are the hot spots. But then we can also integrate uh, color into the drawing itself. So this particular view um, is showing um, a one row of, of racks within, um, within, a, within a data center. Onto the rack, we've located the actual um, power and environmental readings that have come from the sensors um, within the cabinet. But then in this view, I'm actually color coding cabinets. So it could be, um, you know, turn a cabinet blue if there is um, more than 30U available in that cabinet, or turn a cabinet blue if there is. Um, you know, more than nine kilowatts available in, in this cabinet. And we can tick as many of these reports as you like. So if I tick for weight, if I tick for space, if I tick for environment and power, then I can only install the servers in the green cabinets because everything else, we've run out of something um, in, in terms of the facility. So behind all the scenes, um, we've got intelligence, we've got change control, we've got integration with, with third-party systems, we've got all the assets, we've got all the um, APIs and all the information associated with the assets. But ultimately, it's coming down to this type of view. Now, this could be um, five data centers, this could be five rooms, this could be five customers, five contracts. Uh, we, can, we can deliver the tile view on a, on a per rack basis, but ultimately, red is bad, green is good, yellow needs need, need some attention. Click on red, it then takes us to exactly to the cabinet that's caused that critical alert. On the right, we'll see the real-time values, and below that, we'll see the alarms and the alerts that have come from that particular, um, the thresholds that, that have been breached. If this sits in a plasma screen, we need to, you know, we can relax and have some coffee or, or something, need, something needs some, um, some urgent attention. And, and the list goes on. You know, there are so many ways of, of, of slicing um, and dicing this data that I think, I've, I think I've already covered. So a part of the modernization and part of the... Um, you know, the need to remove complexity um, is, is, is solved by, by these tools. But in reality, it's a conversation and it's a journey between us as a vendor and, and, and you as a customer. We can introduce you to an, you know, a wide variety of different end users that are already doing this. And that's really where these user groups you know, provide a lot, of, a lot of benefit. People that are new, talking to people that are experienced, and 
you know, between us, we can, we can help and we can implement uh, best practice. But at the end of the day, the complexity is increasing. And we've only really talked today about the physical environment. We haven't even touched integration with VMware and trying to find out where certain um, virtual machines are and, and, and the impact of, of, of all of that, which we can also do as well. But the complexity is so high that your existing tool sets are, you know, we, we, we argue they're not, they're, they're not good enough or they are so time consuming and they're still, they're still prone to error that we, we wonder about the validity um, of them. So we argue that second generation DSIM should help planning, it should remove risk, and it should help with the efficiency by being able to safely use the expensive resources that you've built or that you're buying uh, from, from a third party. So that concludes from me. Thank you very much for your time and hope that was useful. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Richard. Um, any questions? Yes? Hold on one second. Thank you. Hi. Uh, can your uh, tool uh, help the customer who joined to the uh, energy efficiency stream uh, code of conduct uh, send the data of, of PUE automatically to authorities? Thank you. Yes, ab absolutely. PUE is something that these, this, this t tool can track and promote um, uh, dynamically. In reality is most customers are not able to do PUE in total dynamically. There needs to be an element of manual input combined with dynamic data collection, but certainly we, 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 we can present that. We can show live PUE. We can then show uh, historical PUE. And then it's a question of, well, where does that information w wish to go? So yes, we can, we can export that CSV and PDF and email and, 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 it, and it can be sent. But in reality, um, there are so many different applications for that, you know, the end recipients will vary quite a lot. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Um, I have a question. Uh, so the interface for using the system can it be used like in on the premises and outside the premises and how do you see the security issue concerning that uh, in reality i mean we we talk about cloud dsim quite a lot and ultimately it comes down to well do you mean cloud dsim or do you mean you want to pay for it monthly uh, and, and and the commercial sides of it are but in in reality if you're polling you know, the amount of data points within a data center, you know, you've got 70 power outlets per cabinet and six pieces of data per outlet, and we're polling those every 15 seconds. The, the heavy polling interval doesn't, it, it really needs to be on, on premise. So the reality is polling should probably remain on the LAN. Um, the operational side of it can go in the cloud if, if you wish. But in reality, it's CapEx versus OpEx discussion. So most of our customers are on-premise. Many are planning to go off um, somewhere else. Um, and in reality, it, it, we're still in discussion on those. But it's this is certainly something that normally remains on. OK, yeah, thank you. And, and I was thinking also from a commercial point of view, I mean, uh, it's one thing when you are the operator of the data centers, you obviously need all this information, or it's uh, some of it you need, some of it nice to have. But how is, is it possible to share parts of the information or all of the information with your customers uh, yeah. in that data center? I uh, mean, uh, if you're a colo uh, operator, for example, you have a different uh, uh, customers and you want to share uh, some of the information, how do you do that? So in reality, the colo provider, they have their own metering and, and monitoring systems. There is typically a requirement for the end user to take information out from those systems uh, to represent in, in this sort of tool. The colo provider can, understands room level, phase level, cage level, but they may not understand rack level, breaker level, device level. Mm. So it's about taking information from the colo provider, adding it to the enterprise data set and, and helping them. But in reality, normal colo is, you know, it's the customer's responsibility once the power yeah. is, in, is in the cage. Mm.